everyone. I am Todd Mason, and welcome to this installment of our videos that uh, we're doing introducing uh, interesting people, talking about great topics of interest, and uh, just having a little bit of conversation along the way. And uh, today, our special uh, guest is Rebecca Higgins. Uh, she is well known to all of our credit unions, and I'm so happy to be able to talk with her today about fraud um, and her uh, role as uh, our fraud and payments consultant. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca and uh, have her talk a little bit about her role and, and what she does. All right. Hi, Todd. Um, so my role is kind of twofold for credit unions. Um, so there's the consulting side and the fraud side, but the two do come together in a lot of situations. So um, I spend a lot of time talking with credit unions about strategy and whether that strategy has to do with their day-to-day -day payments or whether there's a specific situation such as a fraud situation that's occurring. Um, we take time to go through um, what their goals and objectives are um, and then also find settings and products and services that will help them achieve those goals that they're, they're looking to, uh, to meet. So, um, you know, I always tell people that I am not the, um, the fraud mitigator. Um, we have uh, specialists that are there to do that. So I am not here to stop fraud. Um, I'm here to help you so that the next time a fraud occurs, we put something in place so that it will stop it before it happens. So, um, Big difference between the two. <laughs> well, yeah. See, now, now that that's, it gets good because I thought you were so magical and wonderful. Ooh. You can make fraud just disappear. <laughs> I, I, that's, not a, that's not within your superpowers. Oh, no. It is not. It is not. Uh, no, I, I, I have, as you know, I have personally sat through a number of your uh, consulting engagements where you sit down with credit unions and walk through uh, the the products that you're using and giving them advice mm -hmm. on you know how they can get more out of what they already have in their numbers right. you just you, you're doing some phenomenal work um right. but on the on the i'm sticking on the fraud topic a little bit sure. um what are some trends that you're seeing i guess especially you know trends that may be different or more because of covid um i you know i i think that there's been a resurgence of a couple of situations um i think the biggest one right now that we're dealing with are what we call bin attacks um, and what happens in those situations is that um, somebody gets their hands on a card number and one piece of information that they can use. Um, and typically it's a card number and expiration date. And from there, what they'll do is go out and get a card number generator, mm -hmm. generate a bunch of numbers off of that, and then they start plucking away at that expiration date. Wow. Unfortunately, unfortunately um, what we've done for ease of use is that systems are defaulted to set expiration dates. So mm -hmm. for example, if, if I order cards in February, probably every card that I order in February has an expiration date of February something. So, you know, it could be three years out, it could be five years out. Um, but these people know that those systems work that way. So they mm -hmm. just start plucking away at information and they guess it um, and do little test transactions. Test transactions are successful. They'll go on to do bigger um, fraudulent transactions. So we've seen quite a bit of that since the first of the year. It started a little bit before, you know, holiday shopping season, yeah. you always see yeah. some trend occur. Um, but uh, we've seen it kind of carry over into the first of the year. I don't know if it's necessarily due to, you know, the, the conditions right now with the pandemic. I think it's more so um, the heightened amount of security that's in place associated with cards themselves with the chip people using tokenization a lot more. So I think they're trying to find the, the path of least resistance, which is why it's happening, so. No, it's, uh, it's crazy just to you know, see how the fraudsters are finding uh, their level of creativity yeah. and uh, the ability to find new ways to, to do, what they're, they do what they do. And I'm so glad that we've uh, got you as a expert to help our credit unions navigate, sure. <laughs> navigate through that. So yeah. kind, of a, kind of continuing that idea, um, you do a lot of great work um, with our credit union. So if a credit union is interested in, you know, whether it's, you know, talking through a fraud issue or even, you know, the, the good stuff, how do you, how do you do more with payments? Um, mm -hmm. how, how can they best engage with you? How can they best get your help? Um, well, they can reach out to their account relationship manager. That's always, you know, I know that there's a lot of regular conversations that are helping, you know, with, with yeah. those contacts. So certainly they know how to reach out to me. Um, always reach out directly and I can loop the account relationship manager in at that point. Um, but really, the, the sessions uh, last about two hours, um, and mm -hmm. we go through everything. We go through um, not only how is, how is the program performing, but we also do get into a lot of those fraud settings. 
Um, because specific to fraud, what's become more important, I think in the past we were always focused on mitigating fraud and that mm -hmm. means stopping it. And I am mm -hmm. so, you know, hyper-focused on fraud losses. However, the, the offset to that are legitimate transactions that are declined right. and members right. who are trying to do things that they can't. And when they can't, what do they do? They pull out another form of payment. And if that does work for them, they'll continue to use it. So um, we spend a lot of time focusing on false positive ratios and those fraud losses and trying to bring those two together in a, in a more of a balance so that you're, you're maybe not, maybe you do have a little bit more fraud loss. However, you're going to have an increase in member satisfaction as well as interchange uh, revenue with that increased transaction volume. So we, we spend a lot of time, a lot of those stats regarding the program tie into that fraud setting um, because if you don't have your program set up appropriately, then you have these fraud settings, you've, you've got chaos everywhere. So it, it all fits together in that, in that conversation. So, no, that, that's great. And, uh, how about, you know, an example more on the, the payment strategy side, you know, sure. how might a credit union uh, get in, get engaged with you on payment strategy? Um, I've done about a little over 20 engagements wow. last year. Um, yeah, there was a period of time where they were, you know, back to back to back. Um, and, and I think of all of them, what I've learned is that um, maybe some of the results aren't immediate. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to think about and a lot to consider and a lot of steps to take in order to get to certain goals that, that credit unions want to meet. So it's been interesting to watch some of the ones that I did earlier last year. And now to see beginning of this year, they're starting to roll out some of those products and services um, because they did a lot of card cleanup. They got their strategy in place, and now we're starting to tick some of those things off the list that we created when we did the session. So it's kind of neat to see, yeah. um, you know, some of those those things come to fruition. So it's it's interesting. No, it's it's it, it, it they are they are great, and yeah. uh, you know, just helping helping our credit unions get more out of what they already have is just so wonderful to to be able to do. And then yeah, of course, there's some really new great stuff that our credit unions mm -hmm. should be considering, and you know, showing yeah. that you know how that fits into the puzzle is. Uh, is very valuable too. So yeah. to, to wrap us to wrap us up, sure. um, you are you know you are our expert uh, in so many different <laughs> things as it goes as it relates to, to payments and fraud is fraud is a piece of that. But uh, you know as you think about this next year, or so what is uh, you know your your single piece of advice, whether that's fraud or payment strategy, you, can, you, you choose. What's what's your uh, what's your big words of wisdom uh, for, <laughs> for the group? My my big words of wisdom. Uh, let's see. Okay, so from a fraud perspective. Um, I think the more you can tell members if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Um, it, it's, you know, people don't just hand out money in order to hand out money. It just doesn't yep. work that way. Um, you know, and the other thing is a lot of small things out there, like the social engineering things that I see on Facebook and, and those little things. And then people try to figure out how they were impacted by a fraud situation. Well, it's because of all of these little steps that you did and you, yep. then they tie them all together. So that from a fraud perspective would be my, my word of wisdom. Um, and from a product perspective, it's really, um, you know, just engage because there's a lot of information out there. The payments world is moving so fast and there's a lot of information out there. And I think one of the things that we can do is, is wean out some of that noise and build a specific strategy for each individual credit union. You know, not everybody works at the same pace. Not everybody has the same capacity, whether it's from, you know, a financial or from a, a staffing perspective. So, um, I think any of those that you can do in small steps even are, are good. So, um, you know, whether it's a, a full session or maybe just some, you know, products that you want to consult on, um, I, I say, let's, let's talk about it and, and move forward. No, I think that that is a, such a great place to, uh, to leave it because you're right that, you know, so much is learned and gained through the dialogue, the discourse, right. and uh, there is a ton of noise out there. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that you do so well is helping filter through the noise and helping uh, all of us better understand exactly where to, to focus. So, Rebecca, you know, thank you so much for what you do for our credit unions. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining me today, and hopefully we'll be able to talk again in the future. You take Great. care. It was, a, it was a pleasure. You too. All right. Take care.